This is The Lockpicking Lawyer, and what I have for you today is an interesting lock from Israel. It's a Rav Baria Keylox Euro Profile Cylinder. I've already partially disassembled this so we can take the rest of it apart more quickly after picking. This lock fills a niche market that not many companies enter. It's a relatively low security dimple lock with excellent key control, and by that I mean it would be very difficult to make an unauthorized key copy. The reason it would be hard to make a copy is this little interactive element that we see right at the tip of the key. If I press on it from the bottom, you can see it lifts up, and it's actually spring-loaded from the back to the front as well. You can't open this cylinder without a moving part inside of the key. Because these keys are difficult to manufacture and the factory controls the blanks, I can have some confidence that if I do give this key to someone, they haven't made a copy before returning it. Okay, let's get this in a vise and see what it takes to pick it open. Get some tension in there with this Z bar. I'm going to be using one of my multi pick dimple picks. Okay, nothing on one, two, three, four. Okay, five is binding very tightly. Got to click out of five, nothing on six. Back to the beginning. Nice click out of one. Nothing on two. Three is binding tightly. Click out of three. Nothing on four, five, or six. Back to one, two. Nice click out of two. We got a little bit of movement on the core, and that signals to me that it is time to set the portion of the lock that deals with that interactive element. I can just use this hook, reach right to the back, press up on it, and we have bypassed it. Okay, we are in a false set now, which indicates to me that we probably have a couple spools to deal with. So let's find them. One, two, three. Okay, I think this is pin four. Okay, got a spool set on four, five. Okay, there's another one on six. Six is being a little bit stubborn, but we'll get them. Must be a very high cut. Okay, I think we got six set, but we lost our false set. Let's try to get it back. One, two, three. Click out of four, and we are open. Okay, let's take this apart and see what's inside. Okay, since we do have a key, I can relock this. First thing we need to do is remove this clip. Now I need the key and a follower, and this should come apart. Okay, this key appears to be trapped in there. There we go. I'm not sure what was holding it in. You can see that we have six pins plus the mechanism in the back for that interactive element. Let's go ahead and drop all of them out into the pinning tray now. Okay, these pins are being a little bit stubborn. Let me just lift them out a little bit, and hopefully I'll be able to get them with the tweezers. Okay, standard key pin in one. A spooled torpedo key pin in slot two. Standard in three, standard in four, standard in five, and standard in six. Now let's get this interactive element out now. OK, 
Okay, there we go. Now this torpedo shaped key pin is really interesting. If we look carefully at it, what that does is make it very, very difficult to recover from oversetting this pin stack. I used to use them in challenge locks all the time. They can be very tricky if you make a misstep while picking. Okay, the first pin is a standard steel pin, probably for drill resistance. Same in slot two. I didn't feel any security pins other than four and six, so let's see what's in here. Number four is a spool. Five is standard, and I'm assuming six will be a spool as well, and it is. Okay, let's drop these springs out. Okay, nothing there. Oh, we have one more pin. I wasn't even thinking. This should be above the interactive element in slot seven. Okay, anything else interesting about this? We do have a little piece of drill protection right in front of the pin stack. Nothing interesting down there in the core. Let's look carefully at this. We have a ball bearing in front of the pin stack right there and then anti-drill pins, both on the top and the bottom of the keyway. We have a little hole right here, and normally we'd like to see a ball bearing in there. What that does is make it impossible to drill all the way down the side of this core and essentially cut it in half, make it easy to remove. But it doesn't appear that they put it in there, either that or I lost it while gutting. And then we have this interesting little mechanism here for the interactive element, and I'm not sure why they put it off to the side like that. My suspicion is it would make manufacturing of keys a little bit less expensive. If they didn't put this right in the center of the key, they'd have to put one on either side. So that's probably why they did it. Okay, so nothing too interesting here. Let me zoom in on this for you. On the key pins, they are all made of brass. Nothing interesting except for this torpedo shaped pin right here. Then we have the interactive element, just a funny shaped pin, nothing terribly interesting except for the fact that it needs to be set above the roof of the keyway. And you can see how it lifts up here. It lifts up and the reason they do that is so a flat pin or a flat key that would fit in the front would never be able to lift that pin all the way up. Pretty clever. As far as the driver pins go, all steel, probably for drill resistance. All standard pins with the exception of spools in slots four and six. Not terribly difficult to pick, but I understand why they put it together the way they did. Someone might not need a really expensive lock, but they do need key control. This might be something for them to consider. In any case, that's all I have for you today. If you do have any questions or comments about this, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.